Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about making and selling candles. Today's video is going to be all about how I make my little six ounce tens. So these are actually eight ounce ten containers, but I fill it with six ounces of wax. So it is a six ounce candle. So I'm going to walk you guys through step by step exactly how I make this. I'm going to go through my formula. I'm going to go through my wax blend. I'm going to go through the entire process from start to finish. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Also, just a quick disclaimer for this video, please do not be intimidated by the math portion of this video. In candle making, there is a lot of math and science involved, and trust me when I say that those were my least favorite and worst subjects in school, so I understand where you're coming from. However, I did notice in my previous how-to videos, I did a video on how to make candles and how I make my wax melts, and I noticed in the comment section below that a lot of people were kind of thrown off by the whole math portion of it when I took out my whiteboard. So don't worry, I won't bring up my whiteboard in this video, but I will be talking about math and kind of the formula on how I make my candles because it's very important when it comes to candle making. And I will also link above in a card to a previous video I did months back where I really explained that formula in detail. So during that portion of this video, I will link it above in case you guys want a little bit further explanation on that part. All right, so step number one, and I do this with all of my vessels that I use, is I always wipe the bottom with alcohol. So this is the little tin, and I just use regular rubbing alcohol. There's nothing special about this alcohol at all. It's just regular rubbing alcohol. And I just take a little cotton ball, I put a little bit on the end, and then I just go in and I make sure that I clean out the bottom. Sometimes uh, during transit, uh, when your jars are being delivered, sometimes they can have some dust in them. And I like to just go around and make sure that I'm cleaning out my jars as good as possible. You also wanna make sure that you take a dry paper towel and just wipe off any of that excess alcohol in there because you definitely do not want that in there when you put the wicks in. Now, when it came to figuring out how to wick this tin, I first started off with single wicks. I believe I tried only CDs and Eco series wicks in these. And I tried a couple different sizes of a single wick. And personally, I just never found something that I was completely satisfied with. It never felt like it was actually reaching the sides and there was still a decent amount of hang up as it started to burn down lower in the tin. And I just personally didn't like that. So I did experience or I did experiment with using two wicks and that is what I personally choose to do. Um, and what I use are Eco Ones. So these are the Eco Series and they are Eco Ones. They are the regular six inch wicks. And I put on the little wick stickers. That's what I used to adhere it. These are from Candle Science. And um, I just prefer the way that they burn. I feel like it actually burns very evenly alongside the 10. And the nice thing about the 10s is that they are shallow enough to where I don't feel like using two wicks, even though it's about three inches of a diameter. I haven't had any issues where I felt like it was over wicked or is burning way too hot. And that also comes into play of my wax blend later on that I will explain on why I choose to do a wax blend to also help it burn a little bit slower and not get as hot. So now when actually trying to get these double wicked and where to put them at the bottom of the jar, I like the to put them about an inch apart um, as even as I possibly can get. It's never perfect, but I try my best to get it as even as possible. And I might have to do this off camera because I don't know if I'll be able to do this holding this up like this. That's gonna be a little hard for me to do. I can try. Um, but basically I'm just trying to get it more closer to the middle and not as close to the outside. And I wanna try to have them about an inch apart from the middle. So if you guys can see that, let's see if I can get this, just like that. So this is generally about how far away I like to place them and whereabouts how I like to place them in the tin. Of course, it's very hard to get it perfect. Um, I try to do the best I can. And then I take these little custom wick holders. So these are actually um, custom made, they're 3D printed. I don't know if you guys can be able to see that, um, but they're 3D printed. And I actually had one of my subscribers reach out to me a long time ago. He also made the ones for my candles as well. So those ones look like this. 
and I absolutely love them for 10 so much. I will link his Etsy shop in the description box below in case you guys want to check it out. But all I do is just put it through both of these little holes. Sorry, it's hard holding this up and doing this, but I put it through like this and then it just rests like that. And then what I like to do is I like to twist. So I like to do this, twist it, center it back, and it looks like this. So it's all held up and then I'm able to just pour through, um, I like to just push it off to one side and then I like to pour on this side. So now we are down to the formula portion of this video. I'm going to try to explain it as best as I can for you guys, but again, refer to the video above if you guys want a further explanation of why the formula is the way that it is. So the formula that I choose to use for everything that I make, I use the same formula for my candles, my wax melts, and my tens, is you take the fill weight, and to figure out the fill weight, you actually need to pour wax inside of your container. I will link a card above just so you guys can see a past video that I did on how to figure out the fill weight. So the fill weight of this container is six ounces. Even though it's an eight ounce 10, it is filled to six ounces. If you tried to do the formula based off of eight ounces, you'd end up with way too much wax. So I personally do everything in grams. It's just easier for me personally, but you can also do this formula in ounces. It works the same way. So with the formula, I do, I take the fill weight and the fill weight is 170 grams. And I divide it by 100% plus the fragrance oil percentage. So for me personally, I want to do 10% fragrance oil. And the fragrance oil is based off of the wax you use. It's not just a magic number that we're just, you know, picking out of thin air. It has to do with what your wax can hold. A lot of people choose to do uh, a percentage on the higher end. So for instance, if your wax can hold up to 10%, a lot of people choose to do between eight to 10% instead of like four to 5%. It's just a personal preference and it's all based on the wax you use. So when I plug my numbers into that formula, the new equation is 170 divided by 110%. Do not drop the percent sign. I've had so many people in my previous videos tell me that they're trying out the formula, but they drop the percent sign and it gives them a completely different answer. So make sure you keep in the percent sign when you're typing everything into the calculator. So when I type that in, I get 154.5. I choose to round up, so I round up to 155. So this number is the wax weight. So 155 grams of wax is what I'm going to be using in here. Now what I do is I take the fill weight and I minus the wax weight, and that gives me the fragrance oil weight. So it's 15 grams of fragrance oil with 155 grams of wax will equal to 170 grams that will fill up this container. Also, real fast, I want to make sure that I threw this in here on how to make multiple candles at once. And you can do that once you know how much it will take to make one candle. Just multiply both the wax weight and the fragrance oil weight by however many candles you want to make, and you can make multiple candles at the same time. However, because I love complicating my life, I decided to do a wax blend on this as well. So I chose to do a blend between Soy 10, which is a container soy wax, with TW30, which is a soy tart wax. So it is still a soy candle, but the TW30 is a tart wax, so it has a little bit higher of a melt point, and it's a harder consistency of wax. So my thought process was blending a little bit of that in with my Soy 10 would raise the melt point and help it to burn a little bit slower because I wanted to make sure that I was not getting a full melt, a full melt pool within an hour like I was before. I really wanted to push it out to about two and a half, three hours to make sure that it wasn't gonna be burning too hot. So my formula for the wax blend is 32% TW30 as well as 68% Soy 10. So I do about 50 grams of TW30 with 105 grams of soy 10, which equals 155 grams of wax. And then I do 15 grams of fragrance oil on top of that. And I will take you guys over to my kitchen and show you guys exactly that in a visual demonstration. So now we are in my kitchen, which is where I make all of my candles. And I'm gonna be using this gram scale to measure out my fragrance oil. 
Yes, it has wax all over it because everything in my life has wax all over it. So I'm just going to be turning that on, putting my little cup onto there, and we are going to be measuring out the fragrance oil. So the fragrance oil that we're going to be using today is called Beechwood from the Flaming Candle. So I just went ahead and measured out 15 grams, and I also got these stickers from Jeff Stanley. They are pitcher stickers so that you don't have to weigh everything out. You can just fill it up. So I'm excited to um, try those out. I'm going to be using this scale to measure out all of the wax on, and I have my laser thermometer, so I'm just going to check the wax in the Presto Pot. The wax in that Presto Pot right now is about at 195 degrees, and it's soy 10 in there. So it doesn't have a spout. So I use this little ladle to ladle in the wax into the pouring pitcher. So I'm going to be measuring out 105 grams of soy 10 into that pitcher before I add in the tart wax. And then now I'm just going to move it over underneath my Presto Pot with a spout. And this contains TW30, so it contains my tart wax. And I have to be careful with this one because I'm only adding 50 grams. So I kind of turn it on and turn it off just to make sure I'm not pouring too much in. And then once I have the correct amount, I'm just going to pour in that 15 grams of fragrance oil and then just stir it up. I don't stir it up for too long, about maybe 20 to 30 seconds, just because I want to make sure that the wax is still hot while I'm doing that. And then now it's time to pour. So I just wanted to show you guys up close what it looks like and how far it fills up to that it fills up just right till that fill line in the 10. All right, guys, so that is going to do it for today's video. I really hoped you enjoyed seeing how I make these six ounce tins. Just for some visual, just so you can see a little bit of a burn test, I'm going to include these clips for you guys to see. I always trim the wick to about a quarter of an inch before I light it, sometimes a little bit shorter. But as you can see, this is about after an hour and a half. The next clip is after almost three hours. So you can kind of see. But I really hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.